Hello, and welcome to Aerotech's Automation One Motion Control Platform Educational Series. Aerotech is a company that solves your toughest precision motion and automation challenges. Automation One is a motion control platform consisting of software based controls and development tools, PC and drive based control hardware, and hardware based drives for servo motors and other devices. In this video, you will discover the basics of retuning your new system in Automation One. My name is Alex Smoker, and I am a control system specialist for Aerotech. Once you are ready to retune your system, go to the Configure Workspace and navigate down to the Servo section. Similar to A3200, we have a few options for retuning. Different from A3200, however, is that now all of the tuning is done through the Parameter Configuration Workspace. Under the Advanced Editing Space, we have the raw tuning parameters for the Servo Loop and Digital Filters. If we go back to the basic editing, we will see that we have three primary tuning tools. Like in A3200, Automation One has an easy tune tool that does a frequency response sweep and automatically tunes and adjusts the servo filters. Then we have classical tuning. This is going to be more similar to A3200's older auto tune feature and comprises of a few different tuning tools such as manual servo tuning, closed loop tuning, and open loop tuning. Lastly, we have the Frequency Response tool. This is going to be the replacement to A3200's loop transmission tool, and it functions very similarly. Let's first look at the easiest method for retuning your axes, and that's going to be EasyTune. Like A3200, EasyTune in Automation 1 is a simple one-click tuning method where you select your axes through a drop-down, then click Start. The axis then runs through a series of frequency sweeps and automatically applies the new servo gains and appropriate servo filters to the axis. Like A3200, EasyTune also comes with the option of selecting a custom performance target. You can use this slider to change how EasyTune tunes the axis. Do you want a tuning that can better handle more variations in the payload? Then select a more conservative tuning option. If you want a more aggressive tuning with better tracking, but potentially with less bandwidth for payload variations, then select the more aggressive tuning option. For migrating from A3200, this is going to be by far the easiest method to use. The next tool is classical tuning. This is actually going to be a combination of a few different tools. The reason for this tool usually boils down to the fact that either you really like tuning or easy tune was not working. Let's start with the open loop tuning. This will input an open loop current into the system. This is typically used when you have no starting gains to use and you just need some sort of starting tuning values to get you started. To do this, select an excitation time, as well as an amount of current that's represented as a percent of the drive's peak current potential. You also need to enter an approximate crossover frequency and phase margin for the system. These two values will often depend on the system itself. Generally, we can err on the side of caution with the phase margin and go with a larger value like 60 for more bandwidth. But as you tune the axis further, you could see this number drop as you more narrow down on what kind of performance you want the axis to have. With the crossover frequency, typically the smaller the axis, the larger you can make this number. So values of 50 Hz for the crossover and 60 degrees for the phase margin are good starting points. After you run through the open loop tuning, we will get some resulting starter gains that we could potentially use on the system. We can then apply these for the starting servo loop gains. Next is going to be the closed loop tuning. This is going to be more similar to A3200's auto-tune tool, and this uses the current tuning gains that were either entered manually or taken from the previous open-loop tuning to more finely tune the axes. The closed-loop tuning tool will make a series of sinusoidal oscillate moves and try to identify the plant of the system. Then it will generate a set of best-guess gains for the servo loop. Like the open-loop tuning, closed-loop tuning allows us to enter an approximate crossover frequency and phase margin. However, in addition to those, we can also enter an amplitude for the sinusoidal move and the frequency at which it oscillates at. After this completes, the closed loop tuning reports back new tuning gains and an approximate quality of the tuning. Then, based on the reported quality, we can go back and adjust the amplitude, frequency, crossover, and phase margin values to try and get a better result. Now, a quality estimate of 93% isn't bad, but let's see if I can get that better. To do that, I'm going to increase the amplitude to give my axis more travel so that it more accurately reflects the inertias in the system. So 
So I think a 97% quality estimate is pretty respectable. So I'll go ahead and apply those changes. And finally, we have the manual servo tuning. This allows the user to input a move, execute that move, and then based on the output response, make adjustments to the servo loop gains. Because this is done by making moves and adjusting the gains, then repeating the process, this tuning method is often used when you're trying to optimize for a particular move that is made over and over again. In this tab, we have the motion one and motion two moves. These can be your step forward, step reverse commands. Clicking the arrows makes the move and then collects a sample plot, while the collect repeated motion button cycles back and forth between these two moves. The configure signals button allows you to configure the plot to only capture certain signals such as position and velocity feedback or error values. After all is said and done, then we have the tuning gains below that we can modify. And then we can repeat this process over again until we're satisfied with the result. Then lastly on our list of tuning tools is the frequency response tool. This is going to be the replacement for A3200's loop transmission tool. And you would come to use this if you wanted a more in-depth look at the plant response of your system, or you wanted to make fine adjustments to the tuning, or if you just wanted to add or modify digital filters in the servo loop to eliminate some kind of resonance in the system. Like A3200, this tool lets you take a frequency sweep of the axis by injecting a current at a specific frequency, and then it spits out a response of that plant. And then it repeats this over a range of different frequencies. We can use this plot to adjust the tuning gains to achieve optimal phase and gain margin, or adjusting the tuning for a certain crossover frequency. There are a couple of different input and control loop types available, such as current loop, servo loop, and autofocus loop. But for our purposes, we will just want to look at the servo loop since we are trying to tune the servo loop of that axis. The input type allows for multiple different types such as classic sinusoidal, multi-sign, or white noise. The multi-sign option just allows the frequency response plot to happen more quickly. So for our example, that's what we're going to use. Taking a plot requires that we first enter a start and end frequency, as well as a number of points to collect. The percent max current option lets us specify an excitation current as a percent of the drive's peak current potential, just like the open loop tuning. So at a 10% max current, a 10 amp drive will output 1 amp of current into the system. You can then press the start button and start the frequency response. At this point you just need to wait for it to complete. Then, after it completes, we can adjust the response for more desired phase and gain margin values using the adjustment arrows. When we do this, we can see our servo gains change accordingly. Also similar to A3200, we can use the Edit Filters button to add or adjust the digital filters of the axis to dampen or eliminate specific resonances in the system. Now, my plot does not have any resonances that need fixing, but we can still add a notch filter to show you how this works. Here we can see what adding a notch filter looks like, how we can adjust the filter center frequency, the depth, and the width. And then we can use the apply button to apply both the filters and the gains that we changed by using the phase and gain margin adjustment arrows. All right, I hope that all of these tuning tools can help get your system back up and running. If you wanted my recommendation, since you are migrating from an older A3200 configuration, I would start with easy tune. Then work your way through classical tuning and frequency response if you still need to tweak your servo loop response. Otherwise, that concludes this motion control platform educational video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed learning about the basics of retuning your new system in Automation 1.